Up next, we have Misfit Markets. Last year, Morgan actually joined me on stage and we did a fireside chat. And it was so fabulous and everyone loved Morgan. I said, maybe we just need to let you run the show. And she said, I'm gonna bring a friend. <laughs> and we love a, mer a good merchant, so welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> All right, hey everyone. Uh, we're super excited to be here today with y'all and talk a little bit about what we're doing at Misfits Market. It's a value-based grocery that's delivering value to our customers. I'm Morgan Drummond, I'm the Senior Director and Head of Private Label at Misfits, and today I'm joined by my good friend. I'm Alex Hickey, I oversee the Grocery Category Management Team, and we collaborate really closely with Morgan on Private Label. All right, we are gonna kick it off with what's on the menu. This is the shortest slide you'll see in our deck because marketing and PR got involved, so we do have some long-winded slides. But Morgan will kick off with a company intro, and then we'll talk about what we do and why, share some customer insights, and then dig into sustainability and how it plays a role in our assortment strategy, and then have some fun talking about private label and some partnerships that have worked really well for us. So who is Misfits Market? If you're not familiar with us, we were founded in 2018, and we're the leading e-commerce retailer that really prioritizes value and sustainability. So we like to think of ourselves as a pioneer on a national level for the ugly produce movement. So we are really big on finding ways to incorporate food rescue into our vision and mission for the overall company. We really think that this two-pronged value proposition of value and sustainability really situates, situates us well in the total addressable market for our customers to, to help bridge that eat say gap, which we'll get into later. And of course, I wouldn't be doing my job if I mentioned private label, which I'll get into a little bit more later on, but it's been an exciting part of our evolution, which you can see a little bit more of here. So we were founded again, 2018. Actually, I think next month we'll be celebrating our five year anniversary as a company. And we were founded uh, in the Philadelphia area. So it all started with rescuing ugly, fruit and other produce items, local deliveries to the Philly customers. And be, beyond that, over the last five years, we've really scaled up. Of course, the demand from the pandemic really helped, but that also was the push that we needed to get into other types of categories. So about 2020 into 2021 is when we scaled beyond just produce. And we started introducing consumer packaged goods into our assortment. And we also really grew our presence nationwide. It was early 2022 when we scaled our delivery network to expand to all the lower 48 states. So we're really proud of that accomplishment. And about a year and a half ago, April of 2022, is when Odds and Ends, which is our flagship private label, launched. And we also do wine deliveries. That was incorporated last year and is a good business for us as we like to feature sustainable wines. And we also introduced our loyalty program called Perks. And it's funny, when I was thinking about being at the summit last year and thinking how full circle things have come. The timing at that summit was, I think, just two weeks after we announced our intent to acquire Imperfect Foods. And over the past 12 months, there's been so much change and evolution and integration as we combined the two legacy companies into one stronger company. Because as I said last year, we were two sides of the same coin really trying to get after how we can challenge the inefficiencies in the food industry and bridge that gap so we can do more together. We've been very busy integrating our warehouse network, our assortment, so all of our customers are getting to choose from the same great assortment. Private label teams, Alex and I are a perfect example of that. I came from the Legacy Misfits team and Alex from the Legacy Imperfect team. So part of the integration work was really bringing the two companies together and re-identifying our vision and mission and bringing like the best of both worlds together. So our vision is to reimagine the food system and build a sustainable system that eliminates food waste. And our mission is to reduce food waste and make shopping for sustainable, high quality groceries easier and more affordable. Next, we'll dig into what the 
problem is and, and how we're proposing to solve it. About 38% of all food in the U.S. goes unsold or uneaten. And I know I'm guilty of this. I buy food and don't eat it and feel guilty about it and compost it. But we've been working with farmers and producers that have large amounts of product that's either destined for a landfill or a lesser outcome. It's either off spec, it's excess, it is short coded, they've changed the packaging, there's all sorts of different ways product gets to us. So traditional retailers are handcuffed by planograms, but we're not, we're super nimble, we can work really fast, and we take these products and sell them at a discount to our customers. So my team really works super hard to aggregate all the products, get the best deals we can, and then pass those discounts along to our customers. The solution, again, we're really tapping into those supply chain inefficiencies and providing our customers the products they would already buy at a discount. We sell all fresh produce at a discount at 20% with staple grocery items, and then we offer discounts up to 40% on these opportunity buys. Quality is a huge part of what we do. We want to provide better for you options, and we want to really give our customers these deals and these treasure hunt items that they can't find anywhere else. And it's convenient. We have an app, we're fully digital, and they can purchase, and like Morgan said, we're in every state now so that people can support us and, and get these great products. And sustainability. Sustainability is at the heart of what we do, and we really tackle food waste and supply chain inefficiencies by building these relationships with partners and growers so that we can get this product quickly and get it out to our customers. And next, Morgan will tell us a little bit about our combined customer. Yeah, so who are we doing this for? Our customer largely identifies primarily as female. They're typically the older millennial or younger Gen X. They have kids, they're a working professional. They live in the suburbs, slightly rural at times. Alex, does this sound like anybody? Uh, yeah, well, that's, customer. we're both our core <laughs> customer. Yes, I see people. <laughs> and at times we're also balancing the health and dietary needs and preferences of a multi-generational household. Also me. <laughs> so they're really drawn to us because we can offer convenience that they need. They have a busy life with a lot on their plate and they want to do good. They want to make good decisions, not only for their family, but also for the environment. And that's what we can offer them with the type of products that we curate in our assortment and our strong value proposition and our authenticity and our mission. So again, they're, they are primarily focused on health, but also they really lean into what's the monetary proposition with the value and what's the impact on sustainability. And why they're not eating more sustainable is because there's this barrier with cost that I think we all feel now, especially right now in inflationary times. So we're really well positioned to offer this two-pronged value proposition and help bridge that eat say gap. Because we know, as we've heard earlier in the presentations today, more than half of customers know that the their food choices have some sort of impact on the planet, whether it's positive or negative. People want to do good. They want to do better. They're becoming more educated and they want to help uh, leave a better planet behind for their loved ones and these younger generations. I think we all want that. So we are really excited that, again, we can bridge that eat, say gap and hopefully remove some of that barrier with our aggressive discount to customer proposition and being very curated and intentional with the products that we carry, especially as we get ready for Gen Z and then who knows what the spinning power of Gen Alpha will be after that. So we really want to set the stage up to be that resource and avenue and pull back some of those barriers to purchase with our customers. So we talk a lot about sustainability and we don't just talk the talk. We really do try to walk the walk as a company. So some of the things that we're really proud of because we are very intentional with how we're tracking the food rescues that we buy and bring into our assortment. We are proud to say that we rescue on a weekly basis about a half million pounds of food that would have gone to a lesser outcome or waste. So that's good for the environment. It's good for our customers. We can usually offer it at a discount. And it's great for those suppliers too because it gives them a better profit stream for that product as well. 
through these efforts, this also allows us to conserve nearly 6 billion gallons of water. Life to date, and life to date, we've amassed about 200 million pounds. That number always astounds me. I have to always get it right. <laughs> Almost 200 million pounds of food that would have gone to a lesser outcome since we started tracking. So really proud of those. We're also excited to say that all five of our warehouse facilities are on track to be true zero waste certified by the end of 2025. So we're trying to weave sustainability and not through assortment, which Alex will expand on here shortly, but through our facility operations, as well as we're being very mindful about our impacts as an e-commerce retailer with the amount of packaging that we use that comes with the territory. And we wanna be really responsible with how we go about that. So we are taking it upon ourselves to be very conscientious with that. Again, try to remove more barriers uh, to our customers. And we offer a lot of our customers a free closed loop packaging return program. So our drivers are already going to their houses on a weekly basis. So for those customers, we have them and offer them to keep their cold keeper bags, their ice blocks, and things that technically can be recycled, but not as easily for themselves as an individual. They can hold on to that, put it out on their doorstep, and their driver will pick it up and return it to our facilities where we are able to bulk aggregate all the recyclable materials and take care of that for them. So sustainability isn't just a gimmick or a branding exercise for us. It literally is at the core of everything we do and, and how we source our items. Just a couple of different ways we provide value. Rescue and off-spec items. I think the grocery items are amazing, but the produce items are so fun. So we have had giant beets. We've had huge grapefruits, celeriac that could barely fit in a box. And our social team partners with our produce team to find like cool ways, because people will get it and be like, what do I do with this? So it's really fun to see customers engaged in these items that we're rescuing. Doing. And again, like my team really focuses on grocery items that come to us for a variety of reasons, which we'll get into later. We also have these opportunity buys, which again, excess short-coded packaging design. We, we tackle it from every angle. And then private label, odds and ends. It's been really awesome to take the imperfect items and like work with the imperfect team to balance out the misfits assortment and bring it all together. Morgan will talk more about that in a little bit. Next on to opportunity buys. This is an ad we ran recently that I thought was really cool. What's wrong with this ribeye? Nothing. It was excess inventory from a nationwide restaurant chain that we were able to purchase at a discount and sell to our customers for 20% off. And they were fantastic steaks. So again, always looking for ways to find new items that we can add to the assortment. And then we had these Olira breakfast biscuits. We were able to offer them at our, to our customers at $2.99, which was a 43% discount to customer because they were short-coded. And then Verb Energy Bars, these typically retail for over $20 for a pack of bars, and they had excess packaging that they needed to use before they um, changed their designs. So we were able to offer them to our customers at $9.99, which was a 50% discount. So again, having these treasure hunt items that customers can um, you know, rely on us for is really, it's, it's a fun part of the sourcing journey, but also a fun part of being a customer. Now I will kick it over to Morgan to talk more about odds and ends. Okay, I'll get on my private label soapbox here. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Velocity Conference without talking about private labels. Really excited with the success of Odds and Ends, our private label program over the past year and a half. Really, the private label program is situated to be that opening price point, provide the value proposition, but also be that better for you entry level option. But what we really try to go after in terms of differentiating us is leaning into how can we make this product sort of a misfits and fit it into the odds and a name. That doesn't mean that every product has some sort of upcycled or rescued attribute to it. Something that I'm very passionate about and very bullish about is making sure we're not greenwashing. So I'm being very intentional with the claims and call-outs that we are making, but also prioritizing the supplier partnerships where we do have those creative sourcing opportunities. So it's fun to, to go into those supplier partnerships just with a question-asking mindset about 
What type of inefficiencies do you incur and encounter regularly throughout your production process? Or do you have any cosmetically off-spec product that's still perfectly safe to eat that other well-known retailers won't take? How can we be nimble partners in providing a re an outlet for that and also use that as a way to extend a value proposition to our customers. So again, we like to look after products that are rescued. I think about our imperfect foods, broken jasmine rice has a few more broken kernels than what's typically allowed, but we take it. It cooks up just the same. Regular customer won't notice it, but our customers love to hear the story that we can really convey through our online platform and tell the story of why and provide such great marketing assets on behalf of our supplier just to help bring our customer along in that journey and feeling like they're contributing to rescuing this great food. We also are really bullish on upcycling. There's been a lot of talk about that today. Angie Crone would be so happy, I think. <laughs> but we do have quite a few products that are uh, being upcycled certified or getting recertified, and that continues to be at the forefront of some exciting new product development that we have planned over the coming year. And also, where possible, and again, really bringing it back to balancing one, what we can meet just in terms of cost balancing minimums, but also what our supply, what our from us, and what can ship easily and efficiently too. So an example of that would be our olive oils. We've moved away from glass, or we're in the process of moving completely away from glass to aluminum tins that provides for a better experience anyway and preserves the, the quality better. And it's, lower freight, less carbon yep. emissions yep. win. <laughs> and also it's an award-winning private label brand. Shout out to the Vertex Awards. <laughs> Thanks, Christopher. <laughs> I almost brought my trophy, but I forgot it's at home. No. We were excited to win gold in the new brands category at the Vertex Awards earlier this year. So really proud of that recognition that we've gotten for the design system. And we were also excited to recently be recognized by Store Brands Magazine as a game changer brand, uh, recognizing our authenticity and mission-driven work. So awards and all are, are great. Right, but what's the true impact to the customer and also to us as a company? We have grown to about 20% of the grocery dollar share, so Private Label has 20% share about for us right now. And through our data, we can tell that customers that purchase our Private Label have higher net promoter scores, they're stickier, they, we have better retention with customers that purchase private label, and the presence of private label helps drive up our units per order and our gross margin value in those boxes. And with that, the customer recognition is there. They're seeing the quality and they're seeing the value and there's a, a hunger and a thirst from them that we continue to grow which we have been. With the acquisition of Imperfect Foods, we've merged two different private label assortments. And if you're a customer on our platform, you still probably see odds and ends in Imperfect Foods. Mm -hmm. Y'all are gonna get a sneak peek. Y'all are the first ones to, to see this besides a few of my friends and coworkers. But we are starting to rebrand the Imperfect Foods private label into the odds and ends banner. So we're really excited that this um, integration of what also was such a very mission-driven, purposeful private label program and really innovative too, it's gonna help bolster the odds and ends presence and really fast track our entry into different categories. So just going beyond dry pantry, we'll see odds and ends pop up soon in cheese, eggs, uh, a lot more candies and snacks. Mm -hmm. Our customers really love those. So here's a sneak peek of what the before and after will look like uh, for some of our dry grocery items. So you can see some pastas, olive oil and vinegars there with the new odds and ends treatment standard. And we're excited to take this opportunity to 
honor the, the best of both brands and what has worked well, and also take the opportunity to flex the odds and ends design system a little bit more, continue to bring in more color, less negative space in the package too, and in our very mission aligned products going forwards, like the ones that have those fun attributes of being rescued or upcycled, we have a new badging system that is, I think, a little more clear and concise and easy to understand from a consumer's point of view, but will still help tell the story and call attention to those unique products. So that transition for all the Imperfect Foods private label products we're keeping will occur throughout the coming year. So keeping me busy <laughs> when it comes to, to rebranding. But another way we love to activate on private label is through uh, co-branding partnerships. So again, referring back to the Expos and Upcycled Food Association, at Expo West or earlier this spring, we co-hosted the Upcycling Challenge with the Upcycled Food Association. And we gave a call of action to the industry ahead of that and welcomed CPG companies to submit some new product innovations that highlighted upcycled ingredients that could gain that certification. At the challenge uh, pitch slam session at Expo West, we heard from seven finalists and we selected three before we left and wrapped up Expo West. So our three winners were Chomps for a meat stick that we'll show you a case study of soon, as well as Petty Po with an amazing upcycled rice pudding. And shout out to our rice supplier who's with us today. So we we're excited to make that happen. And then also Atoria's Family Bakery for a mini non using regrained uh, super grain upcycled flour and there's an image right there and I think that product also won the next C award yep. too last week at Expo. Awesome. Future opportunities. Different ways we're looking to partner with suppliers. Replenishment in everyday items, staple items that are always available on our site. I often tell suppliers let us be the premium high-end outlet <clears throat> platform for excess supply. You don't have to work with other supplies. We can take it and we can sell it and it's really a great way to keep the brand equity and not deplete that. And then also off-spec items. Again, items that don't meet traditional specs, whether it be weight or a packaging misprint. We're always happy to work on that stuff. Partnering with Morgan on private label opportunities. And then just new products that really complement all of our brand's goals, sustainability, and just providing better foods for our customers. And again, you don't have to be one or the other. Some suppliers start with us as opportunity buy suppliers, and then they become an everyday supplier and vice versa. And same with private label. So we are really open to working with all kinds of suppliers on pretty much any kind of project at this point. So an example of one of these wins would be, who all here has heard of Belgian boys? Yes, Stroop Waffles, <laughs> Mini Pancake Cereal. They came to us with a problem. Those Stroop Waffles are delicious, but they can be pretty delicate in production. They were telling us we have all this breakage, and we said, let's work together on a co-branded upcycled stroop waffle project. And so we've launched that. They're a great partner to work with and such a fun brand too. But these stroop waffles are exclusive to us and contain over 12% upcycled cookie content and offered at nearly half um, of what their standard stroop waffle goes for typically. This is one of my favorite stories. So during the pandemic, a lot of suppliers were put in a really tough spot with supply. I know I faced those challenges in my previous role and Imperfect was no stranger to that. We got a call from a supplier who had supplied movie theaters with popcorn kernels. And when the lockdown went into effect, all the movie theaters closed as well. So they really had a huge surplus of popcorn kernels. We were able to work quickly with our private label team at the time and and bag these kernels and sell them to our customers. And it just was really, it was a great win partnership and just, just one example of the many ways that we helped save food during the pandemic. And then lastly, Chomps is upcycled meat sticks I spoke to earlier. So their innovative submission during the upcycling challenge was that they, in the normal production process of their meat sticks, uh, which always do so well for us on the platform, mm -hmm. there's a lot of meat sticks they produce that come off the line that are irregular, they're customer 
genetically imperfect and don't meet their specific spec for what they put in their boxes, but it's perfectly safe to eat. It's the same quality meat, it just looks a little wonky. So what they're doing is that they're putting that back into a new batch so that uh, each of these six contains at least 10% of meat that would have gone to, to waste otherwise, just for being a little funny looking. So these are actually hitting our platform now and the other two upcycle challenge winning items will be available on our platform by the end of the year as well. And if you're interested in partnering with us, if you know someone that could benefit from working with us on some distressed product, we have a team of CMs that loves to mentor and work with suppliers on things like that. So definitely please reach out to us because we're happy to help and, and look for solutions to be sustainable and help save the food however we can. Thank you. Thank you.